Hi, uh, my name is Kyle, and uh, this is Alex, and we are here representing Flowtap. And we solve a problem that most of you guys can probably relate to, and that's waiting for a drink in a bar or a nightclub uh, or waiting for service. And one of the reasons that this problem exists is because of the massive amount of inefficiencies that occur uh, behind the bar counter. And uh, if you watch a bartender really closely on a busy Friday or Saturday night, uh, you'd be amazed at the amount of time they spend not making drinks. <laughs> and they're, they're counting cash, they're swiping credit cards, they're uh, entering orders manually into their point of sale system, they're opening and closing out bar tabs, and we estimate that they lose about 30% in efficiency throughout a night um, on, on all these transactional uh, inefficiencies. And so our goal is to completely remove these from the drink ordering process. And so, you know, the concept is pretty simple. Uh, we give you, we let you store a credit card on your phone and you can order drinks uh, from anywhere within the bar without waiting in line. And you have the, the access to the entire food and drink menu right in the palm of your hand. So. I'm going to walk you through a quick demo here and um, show you how it works. <coughs> um, basically, you're just going to hit drink here. It's going to use geolocation. It's going to identify the bars uh, closest to you. They're, or, they'll sort them to uh, whichever, whichever ones are closest to you. Um, we'll be at this uh, the bar called the basement here. And then uh, we have it broken up into a number of different categories. They have their featured section. They have their happy hour. You can browse the beer, wine, cocktails, shooters, and then the non-alcoholic uh, soft drinks. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at the beer menu here. Uh, we'll add a, a Bud Light and a Blue Moon. And then uh, we'll go back and let's go to, to cocktails here. And then what we allow you to do is actually choose the type of liquor that you, uh, you want to add uh, within your drink. So uh, we'll just get a little drop down here. We're, we'll keep it classy. We'll do some Grey Goose here. We'll add it to, the, uh, to, to our cart. And then we're going to check out. And then from here, you're going to actually have two options. Um, you can have it delivered to your table if you're if you're sitting down. We have little table numbers sitting at each of the tables, or uh, you'll pick it up at the bar. You're going to receive a text message when the drink's ready. Um, you can adjust your gratuity uh, up and down. We just have a little slider here, and then um, if you have a credit card already stored on file, you just add it. Uh, you can just choose, hey, I put it on my Amex or put it on my Mastercard. You can store as many cards in there as you want, and uh, we'll just add it to uh, my my Amex here, and then I'm going to hit place order. From there, the order just shows up on an iPad behind the bar, and uh, you can just hang out, you can relax, you can go to the bathroom, your drink is on its way. You'll receive a push notification when the drink's ready, and you can come up and grab it. Uh, we have a little printout um, on, uh, from, like on, a, on a printer so you know which drink is yours, and that's it. At the end of the night, there's no open tabs to worry about. You don't have to flag down your bartender or flag down the server to, to close out and uh, you can just leave and so we just we uh, send you an email of your, your receipt and uh, hopefully we're adding you know a lot of uh, convenience to your night out so I'll, uh, I'll keep it short and I'll take some questions <coughs> what? Okay. yeah how do I know if the bar <coughs> supports this well they're gonna be on our list so uh, we have a lot of in in bar signage uh, we're a little you know, here. Yeah, so we have little coasters, we have little table tents, things like this. We'll have, um, you have a little QR code you can scan. Um, we do a lot of in-bar advertising, and uh, but yeah, if, they, if they're on if they're on the FlowTab list, then they're supported by FlowTab. So so I can't just drop into a bar and expect it to. <laughs> Hopefully, eventually, but <laughs> not yet. Um, yeah, they have to be on. They have to coordinate with our system because they need an iPad and they need. There's a form Yeah. Can you make sure to repeat? Them? Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll repeat them. Yeah. Who pays for the iPad hardware that's behind the bar? So he asked who pays for the, for the hardware. Um, initially, we've been providing the, some of our pilot bars with, with the iPad, but uh, eventually we'll, we'll start charging them for them. They're not that expensive. Uh, we're just using first generation iPads. So, yeah. You said table numbers. Is this something that you supply for them? or? Yeah. Do, it, you, we, do you create a map for them, or do they have to sure. create that? So he, he asked you, um, how does the table numbers work? Um, we give them little stickers and they can put them on their tables and the, the servers already know that all their tables already have numbers anyways and so typically the, the servers will know which, um, which table is, is table six and so they see John at table six wants a Bud Light, they typically know which is table six and if they forget it's sitting on the numbers anyways. You so. can adapt to whatever numbering system they sure. already have? yeah, but most of them have, have numbers anyways. Uh, yeah, back yeah, So why uh, bars first? 
what about our restaurants? Let's say, can you order something in a restaurant? <coughs> sure. What's this kind of system? Yeah, so you said, why bars? Um, the, the profit margin is a lot higher on bars uh, than restaurants. <laughs> um, I, I don't know of anyone going and just closing out a subway and uh, making it rain, you know, like. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it, it's more an attractive market for us. I also think it's a bigger pain point. Um, I've, I've waited 25 minutes in a, you know, in a bar before to get, you know, for the bartender to even get my attention. You know, I, I don't remember waiting that long for a Chipotle. And so, you know, we think we, we're solving a bigger problem. There's a higher amount of inefficiency. There's a higher amount of volume. Um, you know, and I think it's just they're, they're losing a lot more money as a result um, from not having an ordering system. Yeah. So if the bar is crowded, uh, what guarantees are there that they will attend my order? So he said, if it's crowded, uh, how do I know that they'll attend my order? Well, what we notice is a lot of times that um, people don't mind waiting. They just don't want to be present at the bar when they wait. So if you're watching a game and you're watching, you know, the, the basketball game or a baseball game, and you know your drink's on your way, you know, that's relaxing to you. What you don't, what we want to avoid is people sitting up there waving their money in the air. It's like a Wall Street trading floor before electronic trading came along. I mean, they're just sitting there just waving it like, bye, 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 bye. And it's like, you want to sit down and, and talk with your friends and enjoy your night out. And if you're, if you're waiting for your drink, but you're not actively uh, at the bar um, <coughs> trying, to, trying to flag down the bartender, it's but a more enjoyable experience. I guess my question is, is, that what are the guarantees are that they will, they will serve my order? Well, is it contact priority of the orders or? Typically what happens is they're, they're ordered and um, they come up on the iPad and they show up on the order that they're received. Um, we also have interesting VIP features so you can pay a premium and know that your drink order always goes to the front. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I mean for some bars there's, there's a high value on that. Uh, if you're you know, a high roller or, or if bartenders want to give that to, to their special customers, uh, they can do that. So, yeah. I have two questions. First of all, is how much drinks are we getting in the night, for example? Um, it depends on the location. He said, how, what's our, are you asking what our revenue no, no, no. is? or How much drinks are you uh, how, how many drinks are we handling? On a typical night, um, assuming they're <coughs> saturated with our system, um, we could guess anywhere from 150 to 200. Uh, it really depends on, on you know, is it a bar, is it a nightclub, are they a wine bar, are they a lounge? Uh, it really depends on the, on the demographic. Uh, but you know the bar bartenders can service through these a lot faster. Um, you know when they have a, a mobile system, and I think the most important part as well is you know a, a common question we get is oh you guys are cutting out the the human element. And it's like well no we're just simplifying uh, the ordering process. We want to avoid the amount of time that bartenders spend with their back to their customer, um, you know ignoring their customers. And so what we find is even the servers will go up and they'll help. Uh, uh, they'll help people order on the app, and so there's still a human element. Uh, we're not trying to cut that away, but just we're cutting down on all, all the transactional inefficiencies. Okay. Yeah. What's about your business model? Excuse me? What's about your business model? We charge the bars a percent of, uh, you said, what is our business model? We charge the bars a percent, and we also have a per transaction fee to the customers. It's like 25 cents. So um, that's just to break even. Per, uh, per transaction. transaction. Right. Yeah, so if you order two drinks and it's twenty dollars, you add three dollars in tips. It's twenty-three dollars and twenty-five cents. So hopefully you can code. Yeah. How many cities are you in? Well, we actually did all of our pilot testing in Los Angeles, and uh, we use them as our guinea pigs. And uh, we're going to do a full launch up here in San Francisco. Um, we just we, we like that market. That's where we were for a while, and um, you know it's we did all of our beta testing. We did pub crawls and um, learned a lot about our our market that way. So. We yeah. have uh, time for one more. Okay. So one more. Quickly, how many man hours do we want to pour into the system? So he said, basically, he asked, how difficult is it to bring on a new bar? Um, you know, we've actually, for, 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 the, for the new bars that we bring on, they're pretty, uh, if, if they're excited about FlowTab, we can sign them up in two or three days. Um, all we need. My question, how many hours does your company spend to acquiring bars, buy. acquiring new bars? Good question. Um, if we're going door to door, it, 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 it would probably takes a week to find a new bar. But what we've been, we've been finding a lot of distribution strategies that have worked really well. Um, trade shows have been really effective. Um, going going through point of sale resellers and independent sales organizations, um, the, that's been really effective. So we don't have to go uh, door to door, you know, knocking on you know, knocking on bar doors. Um, you know, we can get to a, a more mass audience of bar bar owners. So, cool. Thank you guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. Shoot me an email, Kyle at Flowtap, if you have any other questions. Thanks.